Ken doing all the work. Sorry, <laughs> Ken. Well, I brought that big old bottle of Jack with me. I'm gonna drink that. There we go. Hopefully not the whole bottle. Well, no. <laughs> not the whole bottle. I should have um, some two inch, an inch and a half. Looks like inch, and, well, maybe one inch would work too. I'm just like <laughs> well, You know, we can get through it. I just want to be able to get wire through it. All right. Just like a little seal, right? So we may need to get through. <laughs> you can see a little bit of snow got on there. Take the shovel out there. We'll need to cut it, but we'll get a one inch piece and we'll cut it to fit. I'll just put the stone on here. Hey folks, it's Eric Gill Jarhead. Welcome back to the channel. Well, we got some work to do. We put those batteries in this insulated back room here with some heat on it. And uh, it didn't get below 29 degrees at the bottom of the batteries and it was running 59 degrees when we got here. So it was staying plenty warm. That's really awesome. Um, it was about 39 degrees when we got up here today. So having a little bit of a warm spell. So that's actually pretty good. We, we needed that. It, it gives us an opportunity to finish what we're doing and I'll show you what we got to do. So let's, uh, let's wander over here and take a quick look. There's Lance's. <laughs> Portable cabin. Portable cabin. Alright folks, this is what we got going on. So when I put this power in, <laughs> it went through a few changes over the years. And we started out with this combiner box. You've got your solar panels here. Three of them run down through a pipe all the way up here to this. They used to go then through the wall to where my power was in here. Then when I changed from my old generator setup to the new one, I was in a bit of a hurry. So you could see a chunk of Romex here. This Romex, I actually ran from the generator back behind the back room there, through the wall, up to the inverter to provide 120 volt power for charging up the batteries and running the cabin when I needed to run it off the generator. 
no problem. That little block right there was where my vent came through for the hydrogen, for off-gassing on my batteries. I had a, a little fan and a vent in there that when the batteries were off-gassing at 28 volts, it would exhaust that hydrogen gas out of this room. Just a safety feature. Now, when I put the new inverter in, I had to run some Romex from the inverter over to where my AC panel is, which is on this back wall, kind of to the, to the right of that window. And so underneath the cabin, you can see some Romex that goes up right there. So we, we ran from the inverter here, just down under the cabin, hooked it up under here and up to, the, up to that AC panel. Then from there, I ended up running back over here to hook up an outlet because I didn't have one in here originally because this porch wasn't originally here. So that makes things a little confusing today because I've got generator power, inverter power, and then returning back here more power for an outlet so it's on a breaker. So what we have to do now is we've got to pull all that out of here. And I want to use some of this pipe that I've got to put these wires in pipe along here so that they're not just haphazard strewn all over, which means I'm going to have to disconnect them, run them through the pipe and hook them back up. That's okay, it won't take very long. But all of this Romex you see gets pulled out except for the one run that goes to the outlet in the porch. That's still going to be there. So we'll try to leave that one in. We can pull it out for now if we have to, but it will eventually go there because I do need an outlet there. Then where I've got some Romex right here, we're going to take that and that big cable, a twisted cable that's all plugged in right there, that's actually my 120 volt feed from the inverter to my AC panel. So <laughs> that's going to get run in pipe into the back room where the inverter is going to be when we get done today. And then there's another cable, the long cable you see draping down, that all gets pulled out because that was from the generator to the inverter, which, which was in the porch. It's not there anymore. So all that gets pulled out. Then you can see the green, which is a, a ground wire that went back to the generator. That's got to run through some pipe and get hooked up over here where my ground is so that it's not twisted up all over here. And all the rest of these wires need to get run through pipe just to clean them up. Eventually I'll run some EMT in here and really get this cleaned up better. But for now, this will get them out of the way and maybe keep them away from mice and rats and bobcats and things that are crawling under the cabin. So that's the mission. We've got to do a couple things in the back room. We've got to move a, a, a piece of plywood we put in there with a charge controller on it. We need to move that around a little bit so that we can remount the charge controller and put the inverter in there. So I think we're going to do that next. And then once that's done, we can rerun all these wires and get it all hooked up and get power back to the cabin. So I don't think it's going to take all that long, but it will if I'm sitting here talking to you, telling you what I'm going to do. So I thought I'd get doing it so we can get it done and have power tonight. Let's get her done. Hey folks, good evening. Oh, it's a gorgeous night out here tonight. It's not too cold. It's not probably not even freezing yet, I don't think. So it's pretty nice. Um, we actually ran the generator for a couple hours. That was awesome. Got power in the cabin. <laughs> it's so awesome having lights in the cabin, folks. I know a lot of folks think about off-grid, you know, and maybe you take it for granted certain things like having lights. Having lights is awesome. Nothing better than having some lights, folks. Stark out here though, holy cow. I'm gonna go in and enjoy the evening. Enjoy the fact that we're gonna have power all night long. So super happy about that, can't beat it. But, um, and then uh, tomorrow we'll get some more work done. So I'll bring that to you. So stick around for that, hang in there. We'll get right to it.
Yep, that's the that's the one I need you to pull out. Yep. There we go. Somebody put a lot of screws in here too. Pull hard. Sweet. Okay, now. Easy does it. Better than nothing. Gloves? No, no. <laughs> Protect it with your body. Don't fall. What is the temperature? 38, 37, 38 degrees. All right, folks. Well, it's been raining on us all day. We tried to deal with some of the water that was uh, impacting Lance's tent here, and I think we got some of it moved away. Cleared up some of the water here so that we could improve things a little bit. So we didn't have enough 10 gauge wire here that we could run from these solar panels into that pipe, actually into this pipe, and then into that one and in the back room. When Tim and I set that up, it was like, you know, 20 below out here, and uh, we were in a hurry. But what we had to do, since it used to go in there, is run 10 gauge back to the back room. And we did that literally just going underneath the cabin here. Well, we've rerouted it through this pipe, and it's water pipe, but you know what, it's working for now. But it's going to be improved. I also had to take that combiner box, which you can't really see them from this angle, but there's solar panels up there. They all come to this combiner box. Then what we had to do, because that used to run in into the, the porch as well, so we had to run some 10 gauge wire down. We put it into an inch and a half uh, Schedule 40 pipe that we just zipped up underneath the, the, the edge of the, the, the cabin here. It's not the greatest, but it's better than what we had. And then we dropped it down here and shot it into that two inch pipe into the back room. Now we did manage to clean things up a little bit here. <laughs> which is good. So things are cleaned up a little bit better. Now that big two inch pipe, that's all the solar panels now running through there into the back room. Then what you see right here, which is some Romex that's coming out of the, out of the cabin and then riding along this iron pipe here, it's actually the old 120 volt that came from the inverter that was in the porch and now actually goes into this back room. And I'll show you that. So we just had to reroute that and run that through to the back room. A back room, which apparently right now is getting a little water in it, never good when you have batteries. So let me show you what we did in here. So first of all, I think you can see that water right there, folks. That's an issue. I've never seen it before in here. It doesn't mean that it didn't do it, but it's a, it's a bit concerning. But thank God that we put these batteries up on this shelf here. And I intended to put them a little higher for now it'll do, but they are up on the shelf. So now these three batteries are sitting in here. They're 24 volt LifePo 4 batteries. They go into the octopus here. Ignore this, it'll get set up later. We've got our 24 volt to 12 volt converter so that we can run our 12 volt fans and eventually our 12 volt water pump and stereo and fans inside the cabin. Now here's where we pushed everything through the wall. So that is my 120 volt coming through the wall I need to put a box in here so we don't have this mess, but for now it'll do. And then all the solar panels coming through. We ran those through some pipe just to keep them cleaned up a little bit. And this octopus is gonna have to get improved a little bit yet, but for now it works. The three solar panels on the ground are run to this Morningstar charge controller. And we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll put the cover back on it now and, and secure that a little bit better. They come into that, it runs here into this breaker here, and then from there up to the main breaker, which feeds your inverter. And then your outback as well. We ran that through here up into the outback. This is the one that used to be inside the cabin. And it says right now I'm getting 67 volts from the solar panels and one amp. And I'm putting out 26.4 at 2.6 amps. So that's good. 
That's why we're, we're seeing 26.3, 26.2 on here. In any case, we ran it into the inverter. And what we did here with the inverter, because I used to have a wire <laughs> that we literally strung across here last night. So what we did is the old generator power feed that, that came in through the wall from the generator here, and it went actually all the way through the wall out over here somewhere, right there actually, all the way across to the porch and plugged in to the inverter there. So all we had to do is cut it off over here in the corner so we had plenty to hook up here. And then we took that wire, which is the second one here, and it was running out through here, and we just connected it up to the feed coming from the DC breaker, which is really going to the DC breaker, and then hook that up to my output on my inverter. So now that's run through the wall, nice and clean. I just need to put a box over here to clean that up. And I will be putting a box in here as well to clean this up so that I've got a breaker for that. This whole wall has to get paneled and so does this one. Now this, this is concerning. I'm not sure where it's coming from. It almost looks like it's coming out down here, so maybe there's a bit of a, a seep through the concrete cinder block wall, which is surface bonded cement. Folks, that's actually waterproof. But there must have been something down here that wasn't quite perfectly sealed, and I'm guessing it must have got wet in here in past years. It is what it is. Not much I can do about it. As long as I don't get more than six inches of water in here, I should be okay. I'm not aware of it ever getting more than an inch or two, so I think we're okay. But that's basically it. We, we still have work to do. I need to put my insulation back in here. I'm gonna go ahead and put some spray foam in and fill up these holes, stick the insulation back in here and plug all this up so at least it stays warm in here because it's getting kind of chilly right now. But I think you get the idea. The, the rain has not let up today. It's 37 degrees out. It's been raining all day. So we're getting a massive flood. The snow and ice is melting. It's, it's crazy. The weather's crazy this year. So that's not really helped us out. But I think, at least for now, we're a bit ahead of the game. I got both sets of solar panels now, keeping the batteries nice and charged up. I do still have to run my battery monitor so I can see it in the cabin. And I need to run my remote for my inverter so that next time I come out here, I don't have to come all the way back here into the back room in order to turn the inverter on. So that's something I'll have to deal with next trip. But for now, I think we're gonna go ahead, finish up in here with a little bit of insulation work, a little bit of spray foam, button it all up and call it a day here. And then who knows, maybe if I'm up to it in an hour or so, I'll fire up that guy over there and see if I can't make another D-log or two. <laughs> so we're gonna try, we'll see if the weather holds up. Meanwhile, I think we're just about done in here. So folks, for now, I think that's about it. I'll drop another video right here for you to check out. I appreciate your watching. Thanks very much for that. Y'all have a great day. The old jarhead out.